first, though, after appearing on Loose Women last week, singer Joshua Radin's given an interview in which he explains where his trademark whispercore sound comes from. Mm. He said that whilst living in a small New York apartment, he had to practice his songs quietly because <laughs> a neighbour uh, used to call the police whenever she heard him. This doesn't bode well, does it? Oh. We think he's got a lovely voice. Oh. But how tolerant are we of the noise next door? Um, I hate noise. You know, like if you're staying in a, um, a hotel and next door you can hear their telly. Uh, I don't like it. I like to sleep with complete silence. Although I don't mind noise from the neighbours if it's an argument, because then I like to have a little listen. Yeah. <laughs> and then I feel like I want to knock on the door and go, so what happened in the end then? <laughs> but obviously I can't do that. <laughs> But no, I don't, I'm not very good. And I do try and be quiet, but my, you know, when I'm sitting and playing the piano or I'm teaching somebody with a really loud voice, I do get a bit worried, but I've got a lovely neighbour. Hello, Edipa. She's quiet. She sits and read, reads a book, so it's no problem Ow. for me. But I don't like... I think it's rude, and I think you should tone it down a bit, because I think you should... <laughs> I do. What? <laughs> I'm just looking at Carol, and I know what? she had a big night Friday. Is, sometimes, you, sometimes you don't realise the volume do you no. sometimes because where i live is very communal it's very you're in close proximity with a lot of people and so you do have to be considerate and there are rules however sometimes you do come in at night and you know when you've had a few ones you do go a bit deaf don't you <laughs> So I, I would never complain about anybody in my building because I am I am I am guilty sometimes of making that racket. And one Don't morning, put music on really well. Loud. I have done. No. I, I've tried. I tried to keep the doors closed now because if the doors are open, then it's just hell for everybody. But one night we were, we came in and um, we were playing some really loud ABBA music. Oh. And uh, one of my neighbours got up in the morning and the doors were open. He came over and you know he was very well spoken. He went. I don't know if you heard it last night, Carol, but somebody in the building was playing music at stadium volume. <laughs> <laughs> and did you fess up? I bet did you, you say it was you? No, no, no it's in their thing, it's in their thing. But, you know, some of the neighbours, are they <laughs> are quite noisy, but you don't, you just don't realise when you're in your own little space and, you know, Drunk. then my next-door neighbour's got a, a surround sound system on his TV, oh, which is... Boom, boom, oh, boom, boom. Okay, when he's watching a disaster film, you feel like you're in it. No, you're in it. It's <laughs> like, you're, the earth shattered like that and it's like an earthquake. It's, it's that loud. But I don't mind because, you know, people have got to live, haven't they? I lived, yeah. uh, I lived in, a, in a little old flat when I was a drama school. It was, it was in this old, very old building. We had one room, me and this guy that I live with, and every night we heard all these noises, all these noises and screaming and shouting and all sorts of noises. Anyway, I didn't take any notice. <laughs> and then one day, we were three floors up one day, there was a knock on the door and I opened it, this man, and I thought he was the gas man, I thought he'd come and look at my meter. And it was a brothel. <laughs> we were actually living in a brothel. And I thought he'd come to look at my meter. <laughs> Maybe he had. Have a good read. I tried, I tried to be a good neighbour. But, you know, when you're staying in hotel rooms, you, you really are conscious of the fact that, you know, the walls aren't, aren't terribly thick. <laughs> so we were, we were at this um, hotel in Ibiza one night and... Um, there was, there was the kind of action going on that you might expect in a brothel in the next room. And at first you think, good on them. Four hours later, the sun's rising and they are still... I'm sorry, I mean, clearly not very good at what they're doing. You know what I mean? You know where I'm going with this? So in the end, I just said to Darren, I've had enough of this. Got out of bed, leant over the balcony and went, if you can't get it on, you know, any chance you could turn it down a bit? And I came back and he went, I cannot believe. You. I can't believe you've just done that. He wouldn't go down to breakfast with me in case we saw them. I said, well, like, you know, then you know what I look like. They know what you look like. Yeah. yeah but, but I think there really... comes a point where, you know, honestly, just have a bit of self-respect. Everyone on the island could hear them. No, but it, again, it's one of those noises that only applies to other people. If it was you, you would be, you would be thinking moment, you were being yeah. really quiet. Trust and me, and I've and never been that do... vocal. <laughs> <laughs> I'm no Leslie Garrett. Okay, now if you want to touch up your wardrobe without touching your wallet, hell's their hand.